Welcome to Off The Record Live. I am Joe Vito with American Songwriter, and today joining us is Shannon Lauren Callahan. How are you, Shannon? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. We are in Nashville, Tennessee at Neon Media's office. If you're here already, you probably know this, but we're on Twitch live streaming. This is live. This is relatively new for American Songwriter. We only started doing it about a month, gosh, maybe two months ago now. But if you haven't subscribed yet, before we even start talking about music, you better subscribe. Uh, I don't know if we still have a graphic beneath we, what we used to. And Michael, Michael's very subtly not. Oh, he just gave me the OK <laughs> sign, which makes me believe that there will be a graphic beneath me. Oh, and there is now. There's one beneath me. So you can check it. You can look at it. We're trying to get to 650 followers today. That'd be amazing if we could. And it'd be a great day to do it because we have an awesome guest with us, Shannon Lauren Callahan, who I already introduced. Shannon, we're going to start with some icebreakers. OK, let's do it. And the first icebreaker is how do you start your day? What time do you usually wake up? What's your kind of like morning routine like? Uh, I usually get up at 5.30. Early? Yeah, because I have a job that I have to be at usually around 7. So I'll get up at 5.30, make some coffee, get my day going. Oh, my god! I know. Is that, what time do you get up? I get, I, it really varies. Yeah. I, I should be getting up every day around 6. Yeah. To catch like the morning news. Sometimes it's a little bit later. I wish I had more of a sturdy routine. Do you feel like getting up every day around the same time? You have your coffee in the morning too. Yeah. Is that like grounding? Do you feel like you're productive in the mornings? I think so. Yeah. I think getting up that early, you kind of have to be. But on the weekends, I usually try to sleep in a little bit. 8.30 is usually <laughs> my sleep in time. Oh, that's It's hilarious. funny how like in high school though, like I could sleep till like 11 or noon and now you know, that I'm an adult and have to work and stuff, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, gotta the, get up early. I, I, I can't even stay asleep that long. <laughs> it doesn't matter how, how long I stay But up it's at bad night. because I stay up late too. So I'll stay up at like midnight and then I'll have to get up at 5.30. Oh, so so. You're not I'm just a zombie. Getting, you're not getting I'm just your a zombie, eight hours okay? a day that you're no. supposed to be getting. No. Y'all, we better be hoping that Shannon <laughs> stays know. healthy. Pray for me. Yes. <laughs> you mentioned you drink coffee. How do you drink it? Um, it varies. So if I'm drinking it in the morning, I'll have some cream, some sugar. But if I'm like having it in the evening with like a dessert, I like black. So. Which is a little bit opposite of what you might expect. Well, yeah. if you're having like a dessert, you know, you're having oh, like so something sweet, you out. know, you got the black coffee. It's a nice combination. That's very good. Yeah. I like, I like, I like the way you're thinking about that. Okay. Texting or calling? Um, how about voice notes? Do you ever send like voice messages? Oh, you send I don't know what it's called. It's like yeah, a voice message. You like hold down like yes. a little send button and I, it just starts recording. I love doing that. Because it's easy, you know, it's like you're calling them, but you're not, you know? <laughs> it's, a, it's a call you can take with you. A exactly. Call you can take home. I, I guess I'm like kind of old school, like I'd rather like hear somebody talk. Because I think sometimes too it's easier to say or like get your point across through a voice message. No, actually, maybe you're right. Do you feel me? Maybe, actually. Do you do that I'm, at all? Well, I, I have friends who do it. And I do enjoy when they do it. And now you got me thinking that maybe it's just an infrastructure problem. Maybe it's like, because yeah. I know that it's a little confusing to send the audio message and it doesn't last. Like you have to like, hit, you have to keep, keep it. Yeah. In order to if keep, you don't keep it, it, it goes so it's away. a little bit like, yeah. yeah. Maybe if they made it a little bit more accessible, yeah. it could become the method of the future. True. But to answer your question, I'd, I'd probably have to go with text. You'd go with the text. I would. Do you use emojis? Yeah. What are your top emojis? Um, I do use emojis. But uh, the pretty, the, your standard, you know, the, the laughing so, face, the laughing use that a lot. The hearts. Oh, the hearts. Use that a lot. Do you use different colors for different occasions? Um, no, just because I don't like to go all the way to, to like, find yeah, the yeah, colors, you know. Heart. I've got the, your standard red heart that pops up, you know. Yeah. So, now, I'm it, boring. I don't, no, I don't do. <laughs> I, I don't use a whole lot of emojis either, but I will say, and if anyone watching it is like a, an Apple person or like a tech person and can put the answer in chat. I'm very curious. It seems like their algorithm for saving the most used emojis 
has changed because I've been using the same emojis for years now. Yeah. And I've noticed very recently that if I just add one new emoji in, it'll mess up my whole little algorithm. Get out loud. I don't know. I'm mad at Apple, is what I'm trying to say. Are you going to switch to Android? <laughs> I can't. You can never make the it's leap. It's the iMessage. <laughs> they, got, they got me locked in. I know. I can't. I, I, could, I could never do Android. It's. We, I, our uh, bass player, Sam, he, he's the only one in our band that has an uh, Android. And so, everyone and so we can't like send him. voice messages that often because <laughs> he doesn't get them. So no, we no. usually make fun of him any chance we can get. Yeah, so. I mean, that's what happens. With the, yeah. it's, 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 it's tragedy that it is the way it is. But Tim Apple, we're all, we're all locked in now. OK. Describe yourself in three words. Um, this, this is tough, you know? This is tough. Um, funny. I like to think that I'm funny sometimes. All right. Um, what else? These are the questions that I'm never good at answering. Um, this is behind the scenes. I know. This, this is, is off bad. the record. I don't know. I you don't got know. funny. That's that, that's funny. a lot of work. I mean, that's that that um, fills a lot of space in terms of meaning. I don't know. Artistic, I guess. Artistic. You're Crea going creative. Creative. I don't All know. Right. We're getting the, we're basic. getting a character profile. I'm bad. I'm bad when it comes to talking about myself. You'll you'll learn this as we proceed with this. We got an hour, folks. I know. <laughs> this is going to be tough. It's going to be tough to get through this. Oh my gosh. It's a delight already. We're already seven minutes in. Can you believe it? I, That's like a fifth I can of the do way. This. I Which, can do this. While we're talking about breaking the fourth wall here, I forgot to mention that if you're watching at home, you can break the fourth wall too and send us some questions. In fact, Catherine's making a face that makes it seem like maybe we do have some. No, not yet, but we will. <laughs> we totally will. So you better keep watching. And if you've got any question, even if you have an icebreaker, I'm trying new icebreakers today. We haven't gotten to them yet. We're about to do them right now. But if you've watched before, I, I, try, I try to use new ones every once in a while. Here's one of them. <laughs> this is kind of an invasive question. This is why I'm trying out <laughs> icebreakers. Oh, gosh. What's I'm glad to be the guinea pig. wallpaper? Like, what's, like, the background on your phone? Do you want to see it? I guess you can show it to me. Uh, you can also well, describe it you know, if you it's that. actually right here. <gasps> um, In our secret Yeah, little... this is... We had a whole you conversation yeah. about <laughs> our secret little drawer right here, which is full of our phones and a bunch of K-cups. We don't have a Keurig that I can see anywhere yeah. else. There's not one in the room, but we have K-cups. <laughs> uh, it's just this, like, little artistic Oh, thing, okay, yeah. Which, um, it's uh, y'all at home can't. Yeah, I don't see know if you can. You can't so maybe see I'm it, learning about the, the benefits or the the, the see, artistic. Of this. See, that was one of my words. Oh, so. wait, what? It is artistic. It's kind of like an abstract, like painting. Yeah. It's got like an early 20th century kind of like. I saw it on Pinterest. It's a Pinterest so. find. That's good though. I mean, I, I, I that's exactly what I do as well. Is like find a, a good piece of art online that I'm like, oh, yeah. this is just a piece of art that speaks to me. I'll make that my background. I'm not big into the. Uh, like photo from my life. Me neither. Yeah, that's, which, I mean, people that have, have you ever met somebody that has like a photo of themselves as like their background? Yes. Their How do you yes. feel about people? <laughs> I hate, okay. What are your I, thoughts? And I don't mean to offend anybody if anybody does that. No, here. I actually think it's, I think I, it's totally cool. Well, this is what I'll say is that if you're out there watching and your phone background is a photo of yourself, Good for you. you should reach out. And I, I have questions yeah. for you. I'm curious what that's like. I, <laughs> I used to, I did political canvassing for like a period of time when I was in college. And I would like go door to door, talk about candidates. Yeah. I went to one guy's door once and he was like on the phone with like his girlfriend in like a fight. And when we showed up at the door to like talk about like whatever candidate running for mayor or sheriff or whatever, he was like, I gotta go. There's these people here. They need to talk to me. Like trying mm -hmm. to get off the phone from this like fight he was in with his significant other. Yeah. Which is a weird context to begin with. But in any event, we kind of stood awkwardly at the front door, watching him be like, "No, I really gotta go," and hearing like a voice on the other side of the phone being like, "What?" And, you know, in response, yeah. he ended up hanging up. Guy's phone lock screen, just a photo of his own face. I was like, "That's amazing." Hey, I was like, "You know, this guy's got a lot going on. Like, he's like getting out of this fight. He's like got his like 
face on the lock screen. It's interesting, you know? <laughs> I mean, I could see, like, a picture of my dog or, you That'd know, something like that, I think, could oh, be yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, that's you know? cute. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Nothing, nothing against it, though. Just interesting. Ooh, this is, okay, I, I like that icebreaker. I'm going to keep that one. Uh, if you could have an unlimited supply of anything, what would it be? Um, let's see. I gotta have a good answer for this. Uh, I'm not an alcoholic, but I do love beer. So it would be cool to have like an unlimited amount of just different beers to try, oh. you know? Oh. At all times, could be cool. Not even just like an unlimited supply of beer, but an a unlimited amount of beers to try. Yes. That's very smart. And yeah. that's also, I feel like it's a, it's got good utility too. Like you can invite yeah. people over. You'd be an instant hit Ooh, at parties. I take that back. <gasps> okay. Money would be cool. <laughs> so we'll do that. Yes, that's Money's my way final better. answer. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> Financial stability is a cool thing. Okay, so. well, if you're watching live, you're going to see it now. It's the first time I asked that icebreaker. <laughs> We're going to keep it, but there is a correct answer. So from now on, money. when people answer, if they don't say that, I'm going to say wrong. The answer was money. What was uh, the worst job you've ever had? Um, hmm. Let me think about that. When I was in college, uh, I worked for this country club. It's like a bev cart girl. I was like a bev cart girl. I also did the pool. I was like a pool server, and then I worked at the clubhouse. Um, it wasn't that bad of a job, but like some of the people that I had to deal with were not uh, that fun to, you know, yeah. be around. Um, oh, yeah. But the job itself was was okay. It was more so just like the people that I had to deal with. Oh, yeah, that sounds job. like high highs, low lows. Yeah, but like driving the, you know, golf cart on the greens all day, just like giving people drinks and stuff, that was pretty cool. Yeah, you know? that sounds vibey. Yeah, like so there were good parts, good parts, bad parts, but I think for the most part, I've been pretty lucky with my uh, job opportunities. Vocation. So, yeah. Got to make a living. Yes, you do. What is, this is uh, a music show. What is one artist you're a fan of that maybe people wouldn't guess that you're a fan of? Um, well, I mean, those that know me, you know, I make R&B, soul music, but uh, I actually grew up listening to like indie alternatives. So one of my favorite bands is actually Death Cab for Cutie. Oh yeah, right um, on. So I'm a, I'm a fan of, of them, so. Shout out, there needs to be a revival, I feel like. Yeah. People need to talk about Death Cab more. I mean, they're still around. They're still touring. Ben Gibbard and you know all those guys. They're they're still out and about. They're doing it. They're doing the thing. Hell yeah. Yeah. Which is awesome. What was okay? So we're talking about early music. What was the first music you ever bought? Whether that be like a single or like a record or a CD. Um, with my own money. Ooh, if you, if is you that can, a thing? Yeah. It's like my mom would buy CDs and stuff like that. But what was the first that you bought with your own money? Honestly, you like, buy this. Death Cab for Cutie. Death Cab. And it was it was uh, transatlanticism that I bought it at like a Borders. Yeah. Do you remember Borders? <laughs> yes. Is that even That's still where I around? My first record. Yeah, you could like go in and you could listen on the little little oh, thing yeah, with the headphones could. and stuff. Oh my it was God. that it was that album, and I remember I was so excited because. Like in my hometown, the mall that we would go to was like 40, 45 minutes away. So I'd always have like my Sony Walkman, my CD player with me, you know? And I remember I bought that CD with my own money and then I got to listen to it on my Sony Walkman on the way home. That's amazing. I know. Oh my gosh. Good wow. times. Oh, let's see, we got, we got a little wave from Catherine. I think we that means do. we have an audience. We, we have, have some oh fan gosh. questions coming People in. People are watching. So Banana Bread 99 wants Love to know, do you have a second profession outside of being an artist? I do, yeah. So I uh, went to school, went to college for sport management. So wanted to work within the sporting, sport entertainment industry. So I actually worked for the Preds. 
Bridgestone Arena here in town. So that's my full time gig is the facility ops manager. So that's like that's why I get up at five thirty. You get that's up. why I get up You're early. Up. If I didn't have that job, I'd You're be bringing sleeping in. Hockey okay? to the people. We're trying. Yes. So yeah. Wow. But that's my full time gig and I've been doing that for um gosh. I think I hit my fifth year this past September. So Five years, right yeah. on. Yeah. Do you feel like that's a gig that, I mean, clearly because you're making amazing music in addition mm -hmm. to it, but what's it like kind of balancing those two different sides of your own life? It's really busy, um, but they've been awesome. Like, I've been very lucky uh, to work for such an incredible organization. They have not only been supportive of, like, my career in sports, but of my career in music as well, so... It's been um, it's been good, wow. but it's nice because I, you know, I, I had in mind like when I went to school, I was like it'd be cool to to do something in sports and entertainment. If the music thing didn't work out for me or whatever, I'd still at least be around it, you know. So that was kind of the whole um, intention of me like going to school for sport management because if you know the music thing didn't work out, then I'd have a backup plan. Yeah, but it's nice go. though because music is expensive. You know, it's like I wonder how people are able to like afford, you know, studio time and mixing and mastering and all this stuff. Like it's not cheap, and it's like having a stable job that allows me to pay for those things is cool. Yeah, so. I bet. And that was also <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that part of what brought you out to Nashville to begin yeah, with? Yeah, was, was that job? Yeah, and so it wasn't to like an afterthought that like. I got here and it was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm in Nashville, so maybe I should pursue music now too. So it's very odd how the uh, chain of events worked out for me, but I'm but, glad they did. Yes, very lucky yeah. for you and also for us because we get to have you here as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we yeah, got we've got more, more fan questions Thanks, coming banana in. Banana bread. Yes. yes, and shout out, we're sitting at over right over a thousand active viewers right now hello to cool. all of you hello so <laughs> exactly so evan plays bass wants to know what was the first guitar you ever saw or played on um evan plays bass i know him actually he's he won one of our we did like a fender competition he won uh this guitar that we gave away but anyway shout um, out evan yeah he plays what's bass. up evan um first guitar I've ever played honestly it was probably I uh growing up I played in um church I was in the praise band worship band or whatever you want to call it I feel like at church there's always just like random instruments around um so I really couldn't even tell you what the first guitar was but it was probably just like some crappy acoustic church so, acoustic just a you know Church acoustic. Yes, like a dad around. acoustic. Yeah, pretty much. Has kind of thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So. Let's see. Oh, let's see. We got more coming We in. do. We still have more. Ooh, We've got a queue of a, questions. Oh, this is amazing. So I'm going to botch this, but in, in, in Muscolino <laughs> wants to know, <laughs> yeah. what is the favorite venue that you've ever played at? Um, well, I've got a couple answers. Can I have a couple answers oh, here? Oh, yeah, give, give Not us just a couple answers. Okay. Well, recently we actually just had a show at 3rd and Lindsley last Thursday, mm. and uh, I'd never played that venue before, and it was awesome. So that's one answer. And then my second answer is um, of, like, notable venues. Uh, when I played with Rozzy, we played Red Rocks, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, Red Rocks. That's like a dream venue, I feel like, for a lot of artists. Absolutely. So the plan would be to, to go back one day and play my music there. Yes. That's the goal. Let's make it happen. Let's How make it happen. How many people are watching? A thousand of us? If we all put our brains together. <laughs> Get Shannon to happen. Red Rocks. Yes. But, yeah, so. That is Between so those cool. two. Oh, and we have one more. We've oh. got one more. Okay, so Brian Roz wants to know, Who's your dream person to collab with? Um, I'm a huge Leanne LaHavis fan. I think it'd be super cool to collaborate with her. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with her. Final answer. All right, 
Y'all heard it here. Catherine has given us the biggest two thumbs up ever, which means that we got through that round of audience questions. But we will be asking them at, throughout the entire show here. So if you think of something, if you're Evan Plays Bass and you got another question, you could <laughs> ask it and we'll ask it right here to Shannon. It'd be amazing. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll count that as our icebreakers Kay. segment. Cool. We're going to move into talking a little bit more, digging in a little bit more on your background. And we talked about this a little bit before we started filming, but something I'm so curious about that I want to kind of talk to you about is the role that the internet played in kind of just your development as mm -hmm. an artist. For those of you who are watching at home who don't know uh, her backstory, Shannon is from Kentucky, somewhere in Word. eastern Kentucky, a somewhere region that eastern. I've never heard yeah. of. Well, unfortunately, and probably nobody from, watching has heard of either. So. It's a very unheard of region. Yeah. What was it like kind of developing your own skills and identity as a musician in that kind of uh, environment? Who were like role models that you had either mm -hmm. in your life or like we maybe talked about the internet? Yeah, I think like for me it was um, just my family. Like a lot of people in my family are very musically inclined. So it was kind of expected of me to like do something within music of some kind. Um, but yeah, I think like just, I started playing piano at a young age, kind of got into that, did the whole band thing in high school, was a band nerd. Um, so I think all of those, all of those things kind of played a role in like where I'm at today. Um, but yeah, I think like growing up in a, a small town, it kind of limited me to even pursuing like what I'm doing now. Like I always wanted to do it, but didn't really necessarily know how to do it. Um, and then obviously like discovering social media was helpful in navigating that, especially YouTube. We talked about YouTube earlier. Yeah, so what, what was YouTube kind of like? When did you first even discover it? Was it like watching other guitarists or piano players or musicians on YouTube? Yeah, I think um, for me it was just discovering new talent. Like I um, would Lo I, I would just like sit there and just search like covers or try to look for artists that like were unique and you know sounded different. I feel like I always wanted to do like A and R, <laughs> A and R like in the music industry. I'd always had a knack for like artist relations, and I wanted to do something like that. I wanted to go into music business, but then the college that I got um, a scholarship in, they didn't offer that. So I was like, oh well, change of plans. But um, yeah, I just, I really enjoy discovering new talent through YouTube. And then I quickly discovered that, you know, I could post videos on YouTube as well as an artist. So. Yeah, and so I want to talk a bit about that as well. What was mm -hmm. that kind of like getting into the world of like filming yourself playing music and then like sharing it? Like how did you even like, was there like even like a learning curve of like figuring out how to do that successfully? I mean, <sighs> Not necessarily, it was just a matter of doing that. I was very shy and I did not sing in front of people until I was probably a junior in college because I didn't think I could sing. I didn't think I was good. Um, but I remember I had posted, I think the first thing I posted of like me playing guitar and singing was on Facebook. And my sister was like, you need to do that more often, like you're really good. And so. Yeah, I think it was just like getting feedback like that kind of motivated me to, to do it more. And it was like, oh, well, maybe I'm not that bad after all. <laughs> like maybe I should post more. And so that just kind of like opened the door for me and I started posting more and more on YouTube. When and, you first started, were, were these like covers you were doing originally? Yeah, yeah. I think like the first, the first video on YouTube that did really well for me was um, I did this like Fleetwood Mac Dreams cover. And I did it with a like, a, like a loop. I did like a guitar loop thing. And it did really well. And so I was like, okay, like maybe this is something that I really should try to pursue. And so then from there, I just started getting into songwriting and you know, later on discovered Instagram. And all along, like all throughout this time period, I was also just like getting better at guitar and like practicing and, and learning that as well. Yeah, so. and so even at that point, I'm and part of why I'm so curious about this, and even for like folks who are watching at home who are musicians, you probably can relate to elements of the story as well with sharing stuff online mm -hmm. or getting involved in like kind of like a 
digital music scene, which is like yeah. kind of something that we like have never been able to think about before. But did you find that even once you started posting stuff and like sharing stuff, did that in turn like influence you? It would be like, oh, I, I, I should get better at this, or like even just learning how to oh, read, yeah. like what people respond to. I mean, really, it wasn't necessarily that. It was more so of like me just as a user on like Instagram, for instance. Like that was, it was channels that I followed that had, you know, either singers or guitar players that I admired or that I, that inspired me to like, do it myself that really kind of like, you know, enabled me to start posting more and, and taking the whole social media thing seriously. Cause it is like, it is very time consuming. Like there's a lot of very talented people out there, but they just don't want to put the time and effort into like sitting down for an hour or two filming a Instagram video. You know, it's like, you got to have good lighting. You got to do the audio. You got to do all this, you know, all these things that kind of goes into that. But I feel like it's been worth it doing that because it's helped me build, you know, fan base and, and, you know, it's helped my music reach listeners. So in turn, it's, it's been a, a good thing. I know a lot of people are like, social media is a bad thing. It's a good thing. But I think for, as a musician, like that's how you get your music out to people is through social media. So it's, I think a good thing. Absolutely. And I feel like this is such a cool kind of conversation for, uh, talking about all of these different elements that yeah. musicians on all calibers can use and utilize. And something that I love about your story too is that so many of the folks who are part of your story, whether that's like collaborators or co-writers or people who play in your band, uh, you met them through online stuff and social sure media. Even like yeah. you mentioned like just finding people you like, just like searching. Yeah. What is kind of the process of going from being like, just seeing a video on your phone and be like, oh, that person looks cool, and then like meeting them. Like, do you send messages out to people like, yeah. hey, hi? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the that's the cool thing about social media. Like, like you mentioned, the my group that I play with in town. I met um, like Kurt. He's our guitarist. He's the producer of our latest EP. He, I met him through Instagram and it, it started just from that. Like I saw him on a, a channel that I followed and thought he was really talented, started following him. And then he had said something about him moving to Nashville. And so I just sent him a message. So I think, you know, really it's just, you're just reaching out to people. So I'm not afraid to reach out to people, you know? Don't be afraid Sometimes to reach you gotta, out to people. You know, yes. you never know, they might not answer, but that's okay, at least you tried. Yeah, absolutely. And that's like what the internet's all about. Just like how yeah. uh, everyone who's watching at home could be reaching out to us right now by asking hey. an audience question if you should have one. Yeah, oh, we, we oh, do. We have it more. It turns out we have some. Ah. We have more. So we've got a lot of gear questions coming oh, in, actually. Okay. Right. So right. Johnny Tsunami wants to know, Hello, what is your desert island guitar? If you could only grab one, which one are you taking? Oh, this is a tough question because like I go through like this month, this is my favorite guitar, you know, and then it'll change. Um, I'd probably have to go with my uh, Fender Ultra strap. Got to go with the strap. All right. On Shout out one. Johnny Thanks, Tsunami Johnny for Tsunami. having a, a sick name too. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Lindy Sings who wants to know, if you've tried the Player Plus Strat, and if so, what is your opinion on it? So I have a Player Plus, but I have a Tele version, so I've not played the Strat. But uh, I will tell you that the the Player Plus Tele is incredible. It it actually it's it's um, it reminds me a lot of my Ultra Strat. So I would ten out of ten recommend checking them out. All right. And I think this is a question left over from our icebreakers segment. Okay. All right. But Lizzie Blizzard wants to know what Lizzie your favorite Blizzard. type of beer is. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. This has got to be it. Let me think about this. I'm going to go with um, Bearded Iris Homestyle. Which is a Nashville beer. I don't know if you've had that, but I have it's tried Bearded Iris. Yeah, it's an IPA. It's delicious. Oh. Y'all heard it here. Go check you it out. You can try it. 
I love getting audience questions. I think it's awesome when you guys write in. So you should keep doing Me it. Me too. <laughs> While we're on the note of talking about like social media and even like gear kind of ties into this now too, mm -hmm. I do want to ask, what is your process nowadays for if you're going to do like a video and post it online? Like, like how long of a process is it? Like do you do it pretty easily these days just when you get the time? What does it look like? Yeah, it's a mixture of all of those things. It's like when I get the time, when the lighting is the best. I know. It's it's it falls down to like dumb stuff like that. But um yeah, I feel like I true though. It is true. Um yeah, I think like for me, I've done it so much that it it's kind of become like clockwork, you know, when it comes to filming videos. It's just you know, I've kind of got my setup how I do things. Um but a lot of times too, like I'll do videos like with, with different types of gear. Like I've, you know, I work with Fender quite a bit. When they have new products come out, they'll like send it to me and I'll do demos and whatnot with it. So it, it just kind of varies on, you know, what, um, you know, if I'm posting a video to like display the gear, if I'm just posting something to like showcase my plane or something like that. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I believe that we're going to be going to an ad break shortly, but I have one question I'm going to ask first, which is yeah. we've talked about about kind of um, your upbringing in Kentucky, kind of how you developed as an artist. We talked about social media. And then I know that your career kind of took this next step when you finally put out your first single, What You Do To Me, in 2019. Yeah. What was that kind of like to have that momentum that was building behind you, all of this experience under your belt, and then to finally be able to be like, all right, here's my song. It was awesome, you know, like I had just kind of formed the the band that, you know, we ended up doing this EP with, um, but it uh, it was really cool to like see all of that kind of play out. We, um, at the time when we released that, we, I had won like the Submerging Artist Competition and we got to go play at Rockwood Music Hall in New York. Um, and that was, I mean, that was just a cool experience. Like we got to open for Braxton Cook and, um, you know, we got to play this sold out show in New York and the single came out. So it was a really exciting time. Um, and plus it was just nice to actually have like, you know, a work of my own out in the world. So it yeah. was cool. Yeah. But it's, it's funny though. Like it's crazy to think that that was just in 2019. It feels like that was forever ago. Well, a lot has happened. I know. Since now we're here. And now we're here. And y'all are here too. <laughs> and y'all should still be here when we get back from the ad break that we're about to go to. Because Shannon's going to be playing some songs. And then we're going to be asking more questions, including more audience questions. So y'all can keep them coming. Or just <laughs> give us a comment. You can just say hi, even. I might not ask it, but that'd be sweet. All right. <laughs> we're going to go to an ad break. We'll be right back with more music, more questions. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome back to Off the Record Live. We're here with Shannon Lauren Callahan, who's going to be playing some songs for us. Oh gosh, yes. What is the first tune you're going to play? Uh, I'm going to play, uh, this was the first single off our EP. It's called Used to Be My Love. Awesome. Cool. Uh, what, could you tell us a little bit about the tune, or like the story behind it? Um, I guess like when I sit down to write a song, I think of, you know, relatable topics and kind of take a, you know, a deep dive in like things that have happened in my past or just like, you know, things that most people can relate to. And like, obviously this song used to be my love, like they used to be my love, but they're not now. So it's like <laughs> heartbreak. Um, it's all in the title. <laughs> it's all in the title, you know, that's, it's cut and dry. That's how it is. But um, yeah, that was kind of the, the inspo was just a past relationship that did not work out and uh, I decided to write a song about it, so. Awesome, well, I'd love to hear cool. it. All right. <laughs> Can't help but think lately about when you were with me, yeah, it was easy. How could you do it to me, yeah? Thought you probably won't, but then we gonna let me from another someone And I'ma call you anyway and say You used to be my love You used to be my love 
thought you were the one I was so wrong You used to be my Love You used to be mine Thought you were the one, baby But I was so wrong Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, didn't see But I love ya, got me too hooked. Thought you follow up, but then you wouldn't let me for another someone. I'ma call you anyway and say you used to be my love. You used to be my love, my love, yeah. You used to be my. to follow on baby but I was so wrong yeah mm -hmm. I was so wrong ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. you used to be mine oh yeah Used to be my love, so you used to be my love. You used to be my love. Oh yeah, thought you were the one, babe. Used to be my, used to be my, used to be my love. Used to be my, used to be my, used to be my love. wrote this one on piano, so I had to like learn it for guitar. Well, it so. sounds like you wrote it on guitar. Well, that is amazing. I appreciate that. Oh my gosh. Wow. What's the next song you're going to play for? I'm going to do Love You Right. Okay. Yeah. So I know that I read ahead of time that there's kind of a fun story about this song. What can you tell us about where it came from? So um, me and Kurt, the guitarist producer of our project, we had this pretty cool opportunity to pitch a song for Diana Ross for her uh, upcoming album and so we actually wrote this song for her um, and she passed on it but you know it's totally fine because we we love the song and um, we were just kind of like all right well why don't we release it so we ended up releasing it that's so cool yeah. how do you even like like was there like a uh, was step one for writing about for De Diana Ross? It was hard. Yeah, I imagine How like step one has got to be that? like getting your cool back together, <laughs> like yeah, getting your composure. I like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It was it was tough, but I think like my whole you know vision going into it was like it's a love song, but you're never too old to like you know be in love or you know find love or whatever. So that was kind of like my vision for the song but um yeah all right well i'd love to hear your version of it if we could hear well, it well i will play it for you <gasps> this is awesome. i'm gonna scoot up a little bit so i think i keep hitting the chair okay cool Joy, 
you smile, babe It's in the way you look at me, babe I can't help but think Ain't nobody like you Gosh, that's it. so cool. Wow. All right. Well, we're going to go to another ad break, but we're going to be back shortly with some more questions, some more audience questions, and some more Shannon Lauren Callahan. Stay tuned. Word. Hello, and welcome back to Off the Record Live. We're here still with Shannon Lauren Callahan. That was amazing performance. It was so cool to get to hear those songs, which came off of your latest EP, your first EP, yes. One Sided, that sure came out did. this past September. I want to talk about this EP. When did all of these songs kind of come together and formulate as like an e EP? Like when would you say like this EP making process began? Well, it wasn't really like we were kind of doing the, the single thing, like trying to put singles out every couple of months. Um, so there wasn't really like any plans at the time to like start an EP. It was something that we wanted to do at some point, but then COVID happened and it just kind of provided us the perfect opportunity of just like doing it because we had the time. Um, so it really wasn't like anything planned per se, but the songs that are on the EP were like the songs that we had just kind of started like, you know, working through and, and like Tr trying to figure out like you know how the songs were going to be arranged and all that stuff when COVID happened so um they were still pretty fresh and then it just so happened that they all kind of worked on a project with each other yeah so but what there wasn't was... a plan to like have a project you know so it all kind of felt it together. all kind of worked itself out so. What was the recording process like I re recall if I recall correctly that you did it at home, like a, like a home recording kind of environment? Yeah, so Kurt, he um, produced the project. He has this cabin in the woods. And so we just went away for a week and recorded in the cabin. And we did it like, we didn't do the whole project that week, but the way that we work on songs is for this project per se, um, we, did, we laid drums and bass and then we just kind of built off off of that it's crazy what you can do remote these days when it comes to music yeah. but we all met that week and recorded the meat and potatoes if you will bass and drums and then um, yeah we just kind of layered on top of that Wow. And so, yeah, what is kind of like the approach to like instrumentation or arrangement? Like, especially like songs like these for mm -hmm. my ear of being someone who like, I've like, I, I know enough to know like what's hard to play and what's easy to play. Like if you're listening to something, but like listening to your record, there was like so many parts where it'd be like something where like, 
a guitar part that's like so cool that I'm like, well, in my head, I would guess that that was probably like some kind of improvised solo or something. But then there's like a harmony on it. So I'm like, you were like arranging all these kind of things. Yeah. What is that kind of like? Do you do a lot of that in that post process I once you have the bass? Yeah, I think like for us, especially just with, with songwriting, like I'll come up with an idea and I'll bring it to the group and we'll kind of just like, you know, work on it together, basically. Um, the riff that you're talking out probably is uh, the song Feel Good, which is like a guitar riff with like a harmony on top of it. And that was kind of different. I wrote that song with um, my friend Jimmy Green and we really, we met to film an Instagram video. And then we fell in love with, with the riff and decided to write a full song. Oh, so no that kind of happened, you know, organically, but. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, I want to ask about a few of the songs spe specifically. Sure. And one was that you played, Used to Be My Love. I know you kind of told us about this tune and where it mm -hmm. came from. And I was just curious, hearing you talk about how it was kind of inspired by a situation from your own life, but kind of in the sure. past. I'm curious, what is it like to be able to revisit things through the lens of writing a song about it, uh, especially like something like that where it's like a romantic relationship or even just thinking about mm -hmm. kind of like life experiences to go back and kind of have like the intention of like, okay, well, I'm really going to think about this and like yeah. turn it into like a creative work. What's that kind of like? Well, I feel like for me, I mean, <sighs> lyrically, like when I'm writing the song, lyrics kind of come after I figure out, you know, what I want to do musically. Um, but I had kind of come up with, with um, you know, the chord progression for that song that I really liked. And a lot of times I'll, I'll write something that fits the mood of the song. I feel like musically you can kind of tell like what's going to suit that vibe, like what you're going to talk about, what you're going to say. Um, and really, I mean, I say that it's about a certain situation, but it's just like, it's just something that I feel like a lot of people can relate to. So I feel like there's parts of it lyrically that you have to kind of fabricate. I think you do that as a songwriter anyways. Like you take a situation and then you exaggerate and you make it sound, you know, like you, you can make it sound worse than it actually was. But um, yeah, I think it was a mixture of just like thinking back to, you know, the chain of events that happened during that time period but also just like heartbreak in general and, and like pulling from other people's, um, you know, experiences. Yeah, absolutely. I'm now hearing you say that you kind of typically start on the music side of things or let mm -hmm. kind of like the instrumentation itself kind of tell you maybe where the song wants to go lyrically. Do you find that that process is kind of revealing? Like, do you ever kind of like look it back and be like, oh, I'm writing a lot of songs that are reflective about a certain part of my life or I'm writing a lot of songs that are happy like is that kind of yeah I guess so I think so I think for me though when it comes to like lyrically writing songs it's not always about like s stuff that I've really been through it's just like pulling from other people's situations and finding topics that a lot of people can relate to so because yeah. I feel like the more people can relate to something the more they are going to listen to it you know yeah totally so. oh my gosh well, another tune I want to ask about is Keep Me Waiting, which has such a cool kind of like neo-soul 80s yeah. kind of like vibe, like all this going pop. on at once. Yeah, yeah. it was really cool. What was that one kind of like, putting together that arrangement? Yeah, that, so that one was, we spent the most time on that song, just kind of figuring out what we wanted it to be. It's definitely different compared to like our other songs that we've put out, um, definitely more pop heavy. Um, but we really liked it. We thought it was like a catchy song, so we wanted to have it a part of the project. But um, we were listening to a lot of like the Night Game. I'm not sh sure if you're familiar with them, but they've got a lot of like synth heavy, you know, chorusy guitar work in their songs. And so they were definitely an inspiration when it came to the production side of things for that song. Um, but yeah, we spent, gosh, I remember me and Nate, he's our drummer, we went over and Basically, we all kind of helped produce on this project, too, which was cool. So we all had a hand in production. Um, but we went to Kurt's house. I think it was like seven days in a row. Every day we went like at five o'clock and we stayed until like two or three in the morning every day, just looking for different like synth sounds, um, which the synth on that song is a, it's a Juno. It's a Roland Juno. So it was just like going through all, all of the pads and trying to figure out which sounds we wanted and 
you know, what parts we wanted where. So it was, uh, it was a labor of love for that song in particular, but I think it turned out okay. So it was worth all the hours and the beers that we drank. So. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, you know, that sounds like a really cool process too, even just to be, it was, able, to be able to yeah. like go through and kind of methodically. And, it was fun. <laughs> excuse me. I'm sure being able to do it at like Kurt's house versus like a studio yeah, it was probably gave you a lot of freedom. I, yeah, and I, I like that too about this project. Like there was no, you know, we didn't have, we weren't limited when it came to like how long we could work on something. We weren't like renting a studio, so we didn't feel pressured. So we could kind of take our time with it, which was really nice. And I think moving forward when we work on other music, I would love to do it that way because the idea of just like paying a, a ton of money for a studio and feeling constricted to like, you know, getting something done in this, you know, time frame just does not sound like a, a good thing. Yeah. So. Especially when it's working. So exactly. Well. Exactly. So it was a fun process. Yeah. We had a good time. Well, on the flip side of that process, I know that you have a little tour that you're doing. You played in Nashville just a few nights ago. You mentioned Third and Lindsay. Yes. What has it been like to kind of uh, hit the road and get back into that live context? Well, that show was awesome. It was a lot of fun. We had a good time. So if that's any taste of like what this tour is going to be like in November, it's going to be a lot of fun. So. But yeah, we're, um, it's not like a tour, per, I mean, it's, we're doing String like shows. a Wednesday to Saturday type deal. Um, but we're playing, I think we're playing City Winery, uh, Boston, Philly, DC, and then we're playing Rockwood in New York to Can top it all off. live in any of those cities? This could be, be your, there. your, you could be there in the flesh. <laughs> this could be your evening. Oh my gosh, wow. Well, I just have one last question for you today. Better be a good one. Uh, it's, it's, I end every interview with it, and no one's called me out on it yet for saying the exact same wording, but it is, you got this EP out. Yeah. You got these shows coming up, you got one show behind you. Mm. How do you feel? What's next for you? I feel great, you know? I'm excited, excited to be playing music. Um, I think we've got, you know, a bigger tour planned for next year, 2022 which is exciting. Um, music, got lots of more music planned to come out. I think we're gonna start working on a, another single to come out, hopefully beginning of next year. Um, so yeah, I mean, things are good. Like I, I'm very happy, very proud of what we've done so far, what we've accomplished in you know a short amount of time. Um, although it feels like we've been doing this forever, but um, yeah, I'm excited. Like we're, we're just kind of getting started. So I'm looking forward to the future. Yes, so. the fe that's, the we future. love to hear that. Looking forward to the future, yes. that's amazing. Oh my gosh, well, oh, and we've got one we've last got another question. question. Y'all are coming through. A final fan question. Oh my gosh. So Squid Dog One, wants to know, who are your biggest musical influences? I have a lot. Um, I always, this is my go-to answer for any type of interview, but I'm a huge Anita Baker fan. R&B soul, she's the best. Uh, Tom Mish, John Mayer, obviously, I'm a huge John Mayer fan. Um, George Benson, oh, yeah. Tony Braxton, I feel like now that I make R&B soul music, like those are, I listen to a lot of R&B soul. But obviously growing up, like I mentioned earlier, Death Cab, Radiohead, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know, his, I feel like listening to all these different genres has like, you know, helped me kind of, you know, make the music that I make in some way, shape, or form. So, but yeah, those are some of my big influences. Synthesis of sound. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for tuning in today and having fun with us. This is Off the Record Live. We're on Twitch, so we got a big thank you to Twitch for hosting us digitally. Thank you to Neon Media for hosting us in the brick and mortar. Thanks to American Songwriter for being uh, the people I work for. I'm Joe Vito. Thank you. Thank you. For coming by and speaking with us. Thanks for having me. Us. Really appreciate Shannon Lauren Callahan. New EP, One-Sided, it's out everywhere now. You can listen to it anytime, anywhere, on 
any platform that has music. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled for any other stuff that we're doing. I think we have another live stream coming up on Thursday. Lots of fun. We love having this amazing online community of musicians and musician, music fans. We're all here. <laughs> keep making it great. I love you all. Thank you. Good night.